So a few days ago, I released this video, which went into detail on one of Hans Niemann's worst losses ever. I covered off some of the psychological aspects around that loss, and I'll link it at the end in case you missed it. So that was in the World Rapid Championship, and then fast forward to the video I'm covering today, which was in the World Blitz Championship, Hans would have been looking for some better results, but then bang, this happens. A truly shocking game, and an embarrassing blunder to abruptly end it. So let's have a look at what happened here. We had Hans with the black pieces, and his opponent was a Turkish Grandmaster, Vahap Sanal, and he kicked off with pawn to e4. So c6 from Hans, the Karakhan. One of my favourite players, Ali Reza Firuzja, plays this one. I do hope he gets back playing chess soon so I can bring you more videos. Then we had this knight c3, so unusual move. Normally white goes d4 there, but this is a sideline. After d5, the most common response is now knight c3, but instead we see d3. So a provocative way of playing, asking black, hey, do you want to take that pawn, chop the queens? And black can do this and equalise on the spot, but I'm guessing Hans didn't do it because he's higher rated, wants to keep the queens on, keep tension, look for winning chances. This is kind of a sterile, drawish position. So instead we saw g6 from Hans. Now queen e2, no more queen trade today. Is a bit awkward, blocks the bishop, but we'll see white's plan to solve that now. Pawn to g3, preparing to be in Keto, same as Hans. And now the pawn took here, pawn recaptures, and immediately Hans shows he's a bit out of book. He goes wrong here. So he comes up with this kind of dubious plan. The order of the day is basically to start developing pieces. These knights get the king castled, leave this diagonal open for the queen to develop at some point, leave these pawns strong and secured, leave the bishop pointing out here. Now, lots of themes and ideas I've just mentioned there, because b6 just kind of goes against all of them. We now had bishop to g2 and bishop a6 from hands. This is his idea. But after pawn c4, he's just helping white set up the big centre. His bishop is misplaced and it soon comes back. And he's weakened this diagonal. Not good play. Now we see pawn to e5. So this is an ugly looking move in a way, in the way it blocks the bishop but it clamps down on this pawn from ever advancing, so white's bishop is blocked too, plus it gains some space, so a logical idea. Now we had castles, knight e7 from hands, and now pawn b4, more space grabbed from white, and again we see one of the problems with this pawn formation, the bishop on a6, not good. White wants to undermine this pawn especially to then get access to the d5 square. So Hans now castles, the bishop comes to b2, pressuring this pawn, so it was defended with the knight, the rook pinned the knight, the queen broke the pin, and now knight c3 develops, very harmonious, again looking to push this pawn at the right moment, Hans brings his rook, and now you can already play this b5 break, that is a good move, Instead, white just activates the second rook first, and now hands drops back, anticipating b5, and white carries on anyway. Now, again, hands, he just doesn't play the most precise response to this. So you've just weakened the c5 square as white, and black should immediately take advantage of that here, hop the knight in, and okay, you're kind of a tempo ahead of what we see in the game. In the game, we see takes. But this is bad because now the knight activates with tempo against the queen. So after the queen drops, it can then hit d6, already attacking this bishop. Now Hans plays knight c5, defends that bishop, but he's really in a tough spot now. White's got a big initiative. So takes on b7 was played. Simple move. Hans chops a pair of rooks with check. Rook recaptures, and now he goes to take this with the queen, but then realises he can't, because if you do this, you drop the pawn on e5. This is the problem. So he then has to take with the knight, and now look at these knights, awkwardly placed, clumsy, the rook invades to the seventh. And you'd love to go knight c5, kick that rook, but then of course you drop a knight here. This is the problem. So knight c6 was played instead, preparing knight c5. So bishop a3 played to cover that square. And now knight c5 was played anyway by hands. He actually had a really nice move here, but it's very difficult to see why this works. So bishop f8. 
Now, the reason this is hard to see is that after white captures, if you take with the king, you're busted because then queen d2 comes and there's a double threat of bringing the queen into h6 and the queen to d5 where it hits here and hits the knight, plus this knight can spring to g5, it's just really bad for black. So that's why you can't take with the king. But the computer's idea is to take with the queen. Now you just don't see this in blitz chess because you're dropping an entire knight. But if that one's taken, the queen switches back and the rook actually has no squares, can't be defended. So you'd have to give up like this and here black is better. Really interesting line. Anyway, Hans didn't find bishop f8, no surprises there. He plays the more natural knight to c5, white chops that one off, pawn recaptures, and now here white just goes slightly wrong. Queen d3 was best to immediately take the d-file, threaten d5. But what we see first is pawn h4, and now Hans goes wrong. He should do something about this awkward placement of pieces and the powerful rook. So a move like queen b6 is good, for example, activating, preparing to challenge the d-file. There are also some lines with checking down here, but what Hans does is h6, h5, g5, and now when white goes queen d3, you've not got time for this queen b6 stuff, or then there's queen d5 hitting two points. It's just a big initiative for white once again. So instead hands, he goes queen to e8 here. His best was knight d4, by the way, just stop that queen invading to d5. But he goes queen e8 here, trying to hold on to this sensitive point and the pawn, etc. But now queen d5 comes. And the difference here is that after black lands the knight on d4, which hands does play, this time the queen is activated on this side of the knight rather than on the d3 square. So captures was played. Pawn recaptures and now c5 advances this dangerous pass pawn and black is in just such a bind here. So we see the pawn now coming to g4. There are ideas to activate this bishop down this diagonal. So that's what hands cuts out. But now it nudges back to f1, activating in a different direction. And look at the times. Hans has got nothing left on his clock. And this is where he plays his terrible blunder. But just before I reveal it, a quick mention of the sponsor of today's video, Aim Chess. So if you're looking to rapidly improve your chess this year, 2023, then do check out Aim Chess using the link below. The code EPIC at checkout will get you 30% off your first month. And the reason I'm recommending this tool so highly is it will take your game data from Chess24, Lead Chess, Chess.com, wherever you play, pull it in, produce a dashboard, and show you where you need to improve openings, end games, tactics, you name it. So check that one out. Do take out the annual membership if you can. Best value, but the monthly is also very, very good, but free to even just sign up and check it out if you just want to test the waters with it. But back to this game, let's see what happened. Hans Niemann seconds on the clock. He goes queen to e6, an awful blunder, of course. How does he lose? Well, you guessed it. He just drops this rook in the corner with check. I mean, this is like a thousand ELO level blunder, just truly a terrible move. Here he just stands up, of course, in a huff, shakes the hand, awful start to the tournament for him because this was about round four. If you want to see another fascinating game that he played that I mentioned at the start, then check out this video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.